All right, let's do five tricks with a vocoder. So today we're going to do five tricks with a vocoder. And vocoders are fairly complicated. They essentially take the frequency content of one sound and apply it to the amplitude content of another sound. I'm not going to explain entirely how a vocoder works, but I am going to give you a quick rundown of how to use one. And then we're going to go through five ways to get interesting results out of your vocoder. Let's head over to Ableton. I've set up a couple of tracks showing off the tricks that I want to show you today. And the first one is vocoding. So let's have a listen. So that's what a vocoded signal sounds like. Uh, essentially, we have a vocal, which is here. Make you feel. And we've got a synth patch, which is a big square wave. And vocoding takes the frequency content of one signal and combines it with the amplitude content of another signal to create a whole new signal. Uh, and so that's what's happened here. We've wound up with the frequency content of our synth patch applied to the amplitude envelopes of our vocal patch, which sounds like this. And you can hear a little bit of the vocal still comes through and a little bit of the synth patch comes through, but it sounds like something unique. Uh, it's a pretty classic effect. So to set that up, we'll turn off this one and we'll grab a vocoder. Uh, and by default, it's set to the noise option. We want to use external. And I always turn on this enhance button. Uh, we need to find our synth patch, which is to operator. And that's pretty much it. We can now play. You notice that my synth patch is turned off. If we turn that channel on, we'll be able to hear it as well as it having an effect which isn't what we want. So we've turned it off. Okay, so to explain a vocoder is pretty complicated. I don't know if I'm gonna do a great job today, but let's try. So this signal here, our vocal is the modulator and it receives the frequency content of the carrier, which is our synth patch above it. So the carrier's frequency content is applied to the modulator's amplitude content. So the controls on vocoder control how that frequency content is processed and applied to the amplitude. So first off, there's this big box here, which functions a bit like an EQ curve. You can choose how strongly the frequency content is brought across. So if we want to favor the bass frequencies, or if we want to favor the treble frequencies, or if we want to draw a really weird curvy shape in here. And so in this case, the sound is being chopped up into 20 bands. The level that those bands are reproduced at is being controlled by this box in here. The number of bands is selectable. You can set four. So the carrier signal is split into four different bands and then the content of those four different bands is applied to our modulator. Or you could select 40 where it's chopped into 40 different bands, which is probably going to sound a little more natural. And each one of those bands can, can be controlled in this curve here if you wanted to. The range of all of the bands is selectable with this range control. So we could go all the way to 18 kilohertz and down to 20 hertz. Or we could really narrow that down so we get a kind of a telephone effect. And the bandwidth of each of the individual bandpass filters can be controlled with this bandwidth knob. If we go wider, there's more overlap between each band, so you get a more natural kind of sound. It is possible for it to become a bit lumpy though. And if we go all the way down to 10%, it'll come sound completely unnatural. Which is a great sound design tool. Now this gate knob also introduces a noise gate, so it won't process super low signals. And the level control lets you push the levels louder or quieter uh, just so that you can match your source material. So the depth attack and release knobs all control the envelope which is used to follow the amplitude. At 100% essentially it just tries to follow the, the amplitude signal of the modulator and the attack and release control how fast it tries to copy those. So with a fast attack and a reasonably fast release it should essentially copy the incoming amplitude signal. And that does sound pretty close to the original amplitude of the vocal. Make you feel. If we drag the release out, it'll hold each individual part of the sound for a lot longer. Make you feel. 
which doesn't directly track the vocal, but it does sound pretty good. And the format control lets you push the frequency content up or down the frequency spectrum. So if we push it down, or if we push it up. So that's, so that's our first tip, vocoding. Uh, it's a really great way to process two signals to make a whole new thing. So moving on to our second trick. This is something I use all the time. This is our clappy snare that we've got at the moment. So it's a good sound, but what if I wanted it to be longer? And what if I wanted it to be longer and not really use a reverb, which might sound a bit mushy, but to use some sort of a noise source to extend that sound? Vocoder has a really nice noise function built into it. And so by using the release knob here, I've created a longer noise tail and using the dry wet, I've just blended it in with the original. So this is what it sounds like completely wet. And I'll drag out the release so you can see how far we can take this. That's a huge long reverb-ish sound, but it's composed almost entirely of pure noise, which is fantastic because you can EQ that and shape that exactly how you want. It's really easy to work with. Uh, let's bring it down to something reasonable again. Now we can use the attack parameter as well. If you don't want it to be quite as slappy and you can use the format knob to push it up or down the frequency spectrum. So I'll bring the wet down to zero and I'll wind it back in again. Maybe I'll make the release longer. So let's compare before and after. So it sounds like we've added a whole extra layer and we have, we've added a layer of complete noise just by using vocoder. All the other vocoder parameters still do interesting stuff. If you use four bands, or 40, you get tonally different results, but they're all somewhat consistent. They're all noise that's been processed to follow the amplitude of the incoming signal. So this is the third trick. It's pretty similar. It's using the noise carrier as well, but I do use this fairly often when I want to add more top end to something without uh, necessarily blowing it out with a whole tail. This example is a kick drum, which sounds like this currently, which could do with a little bit of top end. So I've dialed some in and you can hear the difference. I'll turn it on and off. So that extra layer of noise is giving the kick a whole lot of extra depth, which it just didn't have before. So to set this up from scratch, we'll drag in a vocoder. You'll see it's already on noise. Let's turn on enhance and we'll have a quick listen to this. That's too zappy and too long. Let's shorten the release up. And that sounds too low. So we'll push the formants up a little. And then maybe we'll draw the curve down so that we don't get as much low end. Perfect, we've got a nice little percussive click now. Let's bring the dry wet down and we'll wind it back in. Okay, so now if we AB. So to me, the kick sounds a lot brighter and clearer because we've added a little bit of noise which perks our ears up. Uh, you could keep adding more and you could maybe make it a bit brighter, maybe a bit longer. When you're processing a kick like this, you can really overdo it pretty easily. So trying to keep it subtle is important. This might be overkill. So we'll bring it back a little. So just that extra little bit of noise makes it sound a little bit brighter and it'll help it cut through a mix much more clearly because your ear will be able to hear the noise above the rest of the track. So for trick four, this is another way to add top end to sounds. I've got a square wave at the moment and it's okay, but it sounds a bit boring. If we wanted to make it more interesting and have more top end, but without kind of radically reshaping it, we can use vocoder to pull this off. Here's an example that I built before. You can hear that we've added some grit and some extra texture to the top of the sound, but we haven't radically changed it. That's just by using vocoder on modulator mode with formant pushed up a little, dry wet brought down a little, and we've increased the output gain to match the original signal. 
but I'll get rid of that rack and we'll build this from scratch. So again, I'll use enhance on the carrier and we want to use modulator. So essentially it's modulating itself. So this is what it sounds like with and without the vocoder at the moment. It sounds a bit duller. Let's push the formant up a bit. There we go. We're starting to get some interest. This is before and after. Okay, so let's blend in the original signal. And we'll push the level back up so that it matches our original. So you can hear that we've modified that square wave. It sounds a little more interesting. So we can also modify the release time, which changes the timbre of the sound. So there you have it. You can hear that we've radically changed the top end of the sound without changing the overall tone. I find this a really useful way to just give some extra spice to a sound that needs something, but I'm not sure what it is. Quite often I'll use overdrive or a distortion to create harmonics if I need them. But this is a different way to get extra harmonics out of an existing sound. And it doesn't sound distorted or broken like an overdrive often does. So it's a handy trick to have up your sleeve. And our fifth trick is to use a vocoder as a bass modulator. Because there's so many interesting controls on a vocoder and it does so much interesting stuff to the frequency content of a sound, I really like automating a whole bunch of stuff on a vocoder and just seeing what comes out. You get so many different and weird sounds out of this, even with a fairly normal input source. Okay, as an example, I've got a saw wave here. And then just putting it through a vocoder and automating every control I can. Uh, that's pretty wild. I'm not going to show you how to do that. Essentially, you just pick every parameter that you can modulate and you modulate it. Um, so I'm modulating the range controls, the bandwidth, the attack, the release, the format and the depth. And I've got it working in modulator mode. So it's just processing itself and it creates some absolutely wonderful noise. Uh, yeah, so I really encourage you to process bases with a vocoder. All right, so that was five tricks with Ableton's vocoder. I hope you enjoyed it and I'll see you in the next one.